I'm more excited about this trip than anything I've filmed in a long time. For the last six months, I've been in secret discussions with a team of scientific treasure hunters who set out to try something they didn't actually think would work. But now I might just have cracked it, and here we are, ready to tell the story. It's an epic tale of adventure, shipwreck, death, beer, the beginnings of European settlement in Australia, salvage and science. It's also the story of a group of researchers attempting to pull off a world first. And if they succeed, we're going to taste something that was last sipped on these shores over 200 years ago. The world's oldest beer. The story begins here in Launceston, Tasmania, with this man, David Thorogood, and a shipwreck. This is the rudder. It's huge. This yeah. gives you an idea of the scale of the boat these people were on. Yeah. This is the Queen Victoria Museum's star attraction. Treasures from the 200-year-old wreck of the early trader, the Sydney Cove. There's leather shoes, ceramics from China. But it was what lay behind the scenes that stunned David, a chemist turned conservator, when he joined the museum 18 months ago. This is where the whole story begins. These are the 220-year-old bottles recovered from the bottom of the ocean. Astonishingly, one of these bottles was still intact and actually appeared to have liquid inside, unheard of for a shipwreck this old. So at that point, I was getting really excited. In addition to the bottle were two other samples, which had been carefully decanted and preserved at the time of the wreck salvage 20 years ago. So that gave us a chance to possibly have access to the oldest beer in the world and we're pretty sure that the contents of that bottle is the oldest beer in the world. And that sparked a wild imagining. Could there be live yeast in there? One day I thought, we might be able to culture that yeast and recreate beer that hasn't been on the planet for 220 years. What he didn't know at the time was that no one has ever achieved this. But this story is all about venturing into the unknown, that's how the beer ended up at the bottom of the ocean in the first place. It's 1796. The European colony of Sydney's been going for just eight years and it's still pretty precarious dependent on supplies from the intermittent visits of British military ships, particularly for beer. Beer was critically important at that time. Soldiers and sailors were actually told to drink beer instead of drinking anything else. The water was considered toxic. So an enterprising group based out of Calcutta decides to repurpose a small Indian trading ship and attempt their first commercial trip to the new colony. Off they set from Calcutta, down to the great southern land and smack into some of the biggest swells on Earth. By all accounts, it was a horrendous journey. As they hit the southern coast, the boat springs a leak, which means the crew have to man the bilge pumps 24-7. And then gale force winds turn into what the captain describes in his journal as a perfect hurricane. Brawling around the southern tip of Tasmania, they spring an even bigger leak. Sinking fast, there's no choice but to run it aground. was a small outcrop in a group now known as the Ferno Islands, just north of mainland Tasmania. And that's where we're headed now, to Preservation Island. Mm. 
Mike Nash is the marine archaeologist who excavated the wreck. So this is where they came ashore? They did. The in wrecks. 1797? Yep, the wreck's just out there. Pretty really. scary. For well, them. it was because they had no chance of being rescued. With the ship's longboat, they managed to bring ashore much of the cargo from the upper decks, despite being stricken with scurvy. So the captain writes that only about half the crew could actually work at any one time. They were 800 kilometres from Sydney with no real chance of being spotted. So Captain Hamilton selects the 17 healthiest men to tackle the daunting task of attempting to get word to the colony in just a tiny longboat. They make it as far as the southern coast of Victoria and wreck again. There's no choice but to walk all the way to Sydney. Of the 17 men who set out, only three are left alive when they finally limp into Sydney and get word to the governor. I mean, it's a hell of a story. Oh, it is. It's got everything. It's got right? everything but pirates. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> The story, like the wreck, sat forgotten for centuries. Until 1990, when a young marine archaeologist, Mike Nash, decided to salvage. I mean, one of the surprises on the wreck was how well the organic material survived. So we get things like rope from the rigging, the leather shoes, there was tobacco, and obviously the bottles of alcohol that still had you know, material in them. Why was it so well preserved here? And what happened was that the wreck sort of sunk into the sand a bit, but actually then seagrass grew over the top of it. So it virtually sealed it, sealed oh. everything in, and it stayed that way for the, you know, 200 years till it was actually found. The salvage became this fabulous exhibit, which brings us to 2015, to when David Thorogood joined the museum and wondered, could there be any live yeast in those bottles? I was very hopeful, I have to say. Perhaps because I'm not a biochemist. I thought, wow, I can see yeast, we can make beer straight away. Brimming with optimism, in November 2015, David contacted several top scientists and got an abrupt reality check. Skeptical, very skeptical, uh, especially when he was talking about getting live yeast out of these samples. Didn't think there was any chance it was ever going to work. With good reason. No one in the world has ever reliably recovered live yeast from a beer bottle this old. Some experts doubt beer yeasts survive longer than 10. To be jumping back 200 years was extraordinary. And really, you need extraordinary evidence to back up how that might occur. The opportunity was too good to pass up to not try. So I couldn't bear it if someone else, if we said no, someone else tried it and it worked. So we got in there and, and gave it a good shot. In December 2015, they got cracking. Here, at the Centre for Ancient DNA in Adelaide, the one precious unopened bottle was taken into their highly sterilised clean room for sampling. The only way that we were going to be able to validate what was inside these ancient bottles was to take an unopened one, because as soon as you open an ancient sample, there's so many myriad uh, contaminants. My heart was in my mouth when we first introduced the, the syringe and took the sample because I thought, oh no, it's going to be clear, it's going to be seawater. The rest of the main action took place here, at the Australian Wine Research Institute. It was yeast specialist Anthony Borman and his colleague Simon's job to find the yeast, if there was any, and if at all possible, culture it. I want to come through, this is our constant temperature room. Mm -hmm. This is where we grow all the yeast strains. The room of hope. The room we of hope, hope. yes, it will exactly, grow. exactly. Yeah. So, sort of every day you come in and have a look at your plates, have a look at your cultures. Are they growing? Are they not? But it soon became the room of fading hope. Nothing grew. Nothing. Most disappointingly, that all-important unopened bottle from the Centre for Ancient DNA turned out to be a complete dud. Sadly, the liquid that was in that bottle wasn't actually beer. Maybe castor oil, maybe something else, uh, but not beer. Then one day, Anthony walked into the Room of Hope 
and saw that two of the samples had come to life. I was genuinely shocked. My first reaction, and I think Simon's too, was do it again. And then I think after the second time, the reaction was do it again. So it was two or three times before we could confidently say that these two samples repeatedly grew yeast. The two samples were from the Tassie wreck. A single bottle of beer that was decanted 20 years ago into two flasks and stored in different parts of the museum. The fact that they were both yielding yeast was encouraging. Then, under the microscope, Anthony saw this. OK, so what we've got here, Johnny Go, we've got two different types of yeast, at least. Yeah. Uh, we've got these spherical ones, which are if it's a Saccharomyces yeast, a, a brewer's yeast. We have this other sort, this sort of little oblong guy here, which is a Britannomyces yeast, another uh, yeast that's associated with brewing as well. So really? So these are beer, all brewer's yeast? All yeast that can be associated with beer, exactly. If you look at modern commercial brewing, they generally use a single species of yeast in sealed vats. But back in 1790, beer was brewed in an open barrel and you might get up to 20 different kinds of yeast. So the fact there were multiple strains of brewer's yeast in this sample was really promising. You know, it's sort of smoking gun at that point that these were beer yeast coming out of the beers. So we're in with a good shot of them being the real deal. It could still have been the result of contamination, though. Brewer's yeasts are common. To know more, they needed to wait on a detailed DNA analysis, which would take some weeks. Meanwhile, the yeast, exact origin still unknown, was sitting there, so they decided to brew some beer. You ready to do some home brewing? Uh, absolutely. Now that's this is it. a home brewery. So why did you choose this recipe? Uh, this recipe was chosen because it's it's an English beer. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably not too unlike what they would have made back 200 years ago. First thing we need is malt extract. It smells like the beginning of beer. Parisian essence, very Ooh. savoury. So this is the food for the yeast, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All we need now is the magic ingredient, which is uh, yeast. So this is the yeast that we isolated from the, the museum samples, the beer samples. Uh, would you like to do the honours of that one? Absolutely. Our shipwreck yeast, of course, is what ferments the beer and creates alcohol. So there we go. Four weeks, it'll be beer. We'll be enjoying it. In March 2015, the DNA results Anthony had been anxiously awaiting came through with the last thing he ever expected. I had to stare at it for a while. Yeah, just to see exactly what was there. They had a Saccharomyces brewing yeast all right, but it was like nothing he'd ever seen before. It seemed to be a brand new to science Saccharomyces hybrid, and it was in both samples. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. Um, scientists are very reserved and Anthony was very excited on that day and he, he kept saying on the phone that this is just not something we find floating around in the environment. And when Anthony placed it on the Saccharomyces family tree, he saw this. So they don't fit with modern ale yeast. What they do come in close to on the family tree are other strains that have been associated with beer in one way or another over the years. The, the one strain we've got the most information for that they're closest to on the tree is used to make Trappist ale, the ale that the monks used to make in Belgium. And don't forget the other yeasts in the sample, the Britannomyces or Bretts. Bretts are not used in modern commercial brewing because they add a rankish taste, but in old style open brewing, they were everywhere. It kind of fits that these things are from, from beer. But right at the height of their excitement, the good ship Project Old Yeast hit its own stormy seas. Dissension in the group. The problem is we've got a 20-year black hole between when the bottle was originally opened, decanted. It, the chain of custody, as you'd term it in a forensics case, is non-existent. You know, somewhere in that 20-year window, anything could have happened. And so under those circumstances, it becomes very, very difficult to actually claim that uh, we've got any proof. 
Without the clean room evidence, Alan is sceptical it isn't contamination, especially given no one has ever retrieved yeast near this old. Could this really be the first time? I'd like to believe that, I really would because it would be so great, but it so challenges what we see everywhere else that I don't think I can really get too excited yet. But both Anthony and David struggle with the alternative hypothesis, that it's contamination. So we got two samples, same bottle, um, decanted 20 years ago and then kept apart. So either there was a very specific contamination event 20 years ago when they brought that bottle up, so that when they decanted it into the two samples, both samples got equally contaminated with our hybrid Saccharomyces strain and our beer brewing Britannomyces strains and then they were locked away for 20 years and both stayed viable for those 20 years. All the strains were in the bottle. There's just too many coincidences that add up. There's only one way to settle this once and for all. They go back to the wreck, dig deeper and salvage more bottles and send them straight to the lab. On that, they all agree. Actually getting the material direct clean, guaranteed, because if so, I mean, this result then would be quite remarkable. If they have managed to revive a yeast from this star-crossed shipwreck and use it to recreate possibly the world's oldest beer, it's a phenomenal achievement. And half the team are convinced already that's what they've done. We think we've got a yeast which hasn't been seen for at least 220 years. But in the meantime, there's one more crucial test. Does it make good beer? Are you nervous about I'm it? I'm a bit nervous. Hey! The shipwreck brew is ready and we're finally gathering here in Launceston for a beer tasting. Ta-da! Wow, look at that, that's beautiful. Cheers! Cheers! It tastes like, like beer. beer. It does, it's, it's, it's good. We're all a bit stunned, actually, at just how good it does taste. So has anyone thought about a name for this beer? What are we going to call it? I think the bitter end. <laughs> the bitter end? Well, I've come up with a name. <laughs> Preservation <laughs> Ale from Preservation Island. It is just possible they've done the impossible and brought to life the world's oldest beer. Cheers. 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 Cheers.